guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Game. This is me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you with a new Let's Play series on Sweet Spices. Not exactly sure what uh, kind of VN this is going to be, but it's got kind of a futuristic uh, look to it, so... Um, this guy very much reminds me of a younger Sissel. Uh, but... Yeah, so anyway, let's go ahead and jump right into Sweet Spices, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go! Start a new adventure. Playing record. Drone 17. Looking okay. Drones, huh? Splash! It was dim and it was a dim and stormy night as a figure running down the field of scrap metal. August okay. Oh. There's nothing the drone could see except a figure running through mountains of discarded machinery, rusty skeletons of vehicles, and other small parts towering between the ruddy the muddy road as he passed through. He finally stopped behind a pile of trash while heavy breathing while breathing heavily to still passing down his nose. What? The figure brushed his wet and rough hair as he looked down to, as he looked down to see the object that he, was, that he was holding in his hand. It was a metallic ball with a blue line of light trailing down and created some sort of pattern. As the drone focused on the figure, a faint and rustic voice of the man could be heard. Is my house not enough? You want to take my... two? He's here! Shit! The shouts broke out. The shout... The shout broke out his self-complaint before he immediately jumped away. The spot he was standing in was shot with several hot leads and topped off with an explosion. Wow, okay. Yeah, these, these guys mean business. Ahina immediately continued his escape and went deeper into the junkyard. However, his escape was halted when he looked forward and saw a huge canal that separates the junkyard into two huge sections. The water was pitch black and the current was strong. Damn it! It's toxic for sure. He tried to look for another way. But his, chaser was, but his chaser was closing in. He looked forward at the canal and its pitch black sewage. Fuck it! He jumped. Right before his chaser was closing in. End of recording. Is that it? The drone continued to search along the canal, but he's nowhere to be seen. We already dispatched a search party, but so far no sign of the object. This won't do. Aegis will catch wind of it. Discontinue the search. Declare the object is destroyed. Yes, sir. Good morning, passenger. We're approaching Waterloo Main Station. Today's date, Aug 18th of August. The weather is clear with temperature of 26 degrees Celsius. A pair of brown, brown long ears tensed up as the announcement echoed around the train. The people inside the train looked up toward the echoing voice and started to prepare themselves. Please prepare your passport and make sure to follow the immigration instructor on the station when you arrive. The announcement lady kept speaking in the background as the rabbit took off his earphones and yawned. He stretched his body as long rabbit ears tensed up again in the response to the growing commotion of the train. Thank you for riding with us. We look forward to traveling with you yet with you again. The rabbit looked outside and saw, a, and saw a suburban area filled with houses. Small commercial business and people started to come out from their homes. Everything looked peaceful and serene for a minute before it was replaced by busy streets with elegant skyscrapers towering on both sides. That was his cue to get up and took his baggage and walked towards the nearest door. He stroked his brown fur around his neck as the view of the station came into his face. Please mind your step and belongings. The announcement's final sentence echoed right before the train went full stop and opened its door. Welcome to Ellerapine. Chapter 1. Act 1. The Opportunity in Wonderland. You're here to study at South Sail University? Yes. And your name is... What's your name? Chance? Yeah, we'll just do Chance. Wimbledon. His name is Wimbledon Chance. Uh, Chance. Uh, I mean Chance North. I usually go by... I usually go by Chance, sorry. Alright, uh, where will you... Where will you stay while, enro while you're enrolling? Oh, at my cousin's house. He lives near Haven Park, I believe. Here's his address. I show the staff my relative, ad my relative address with my phone. Fox Lady nods in confirmation and stamps the passport. Enjoy your stay! I thank the lady who took my green passport before saving it in my bag. I take a deep breath and left the, cor and left the corner towards the exit gate. I'm nervous yet excited. I see a crowd of people holding signs with names on it as I reach the exit gate. Their eyes looking at the gate, searching among hundreds of people that come out. Naturally, I look around for my cousin who's supposed to pick me up. My name wasn't on any of those signs. I kept looking around before my phone rings. Uh, hello? Alright, y'all. Uh, one second. It's gonna be water time real quick. 
All right. Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock? Is this a secret agent meeting? I'm confused for a bit before I look on my left. The gray wolf smiles with his phone on and he's looking straight at me. You know, Roderick, you can use sign instead of instructing me like some secret agent. I'd rather run around the station looking for you instead of holding those stupid, embarrassing signs. I swear I even saw one of them one of them sprayed with glitter. The wolf in front of me is my cousin, Roderick. He moved here five years ago when he got the opportunity to get scholarship here. Heads up! Uh huh? Hey! I look at my cousin and I see a helmet flying towards me. I yelp, but my, refl but my reflex of your playing basketball kicks in and catches the ball. Oi, careful! Heh, <laughs> hop in. We're gonna have a little city tour. Roderick starts starts his mo starts his moped and both of us drove towards the downtown. And to the left you can see South Hill University. That big white cornucopia you see on the top of the hill over there is SHU main building. I look to the left and see the big building that he pointed at. Though I'm not really paying much attention. My brain is more focused on the hot moped seat that I have to sit on for more than an hour. My cousin is surprisingly fine. He keeps monologuing like a tour guide. He points at several buildings while he drives to the top of the hill. I'm starting to enjoy the, hit, the view on the hill when suddenly Roderick stops in front of the huge cornucopia he pointed at earlier. Oh wait, why are we stopping? I already, pointed, already printed your documents sent by your parents, plus a couple of things that re was required. You can submit it right now and finish the registration process today. Dude, I just got here. Everything you need is in there. You left your baggage here and finish the business. Chop chop! The wolf waves with the wolf waves with innocent ex he wolf waves with innocent expression on his face while myself fall into Jesus that sentence. I don't have energy to argue back. Everything everything this document is prepared and he even pecked me up. Okay. A sign entered the building, leaving him behind on his moped. Really? It's less than five hours since I got here, but I immediately do my paperwork. But at least give me a rest. Ugh. I arrive at the spot where that wolf dropped me off, but he isn't there. Did I take a wrong turn? I look around. The damn wolf is still nowhere to be seen. Before I panicked and ran around the main building, my phone rings. There's a message from him. Sorry, I forgot something important. I attached the map to my pla to my place below. It's only one station away. Eh? You already sneaked the monorail card into your bag. Just take the train to Haven Park and follow the directions on the map. It's only a five minute walk from the station. Good luck. Eh? Haven Park Station. Haven Park Station. I step out from the train with my phone to guide me towards Roderick's place. The station looks empty and unnerving. It's not like I'm scared of quiet places, it's because I have no way to know where I must go beside my phone. Yeah, this is because of him. Not only did he leave me in the city I'm not familiar with, he also told me to go home by myself. I'm upset on his reckless and impatient behavior, but also kind of impressed on, on how prepared he is. Heck, he even got time to sneak the sneak Skytrain's card into my bag. How and when did that happen? I stop and see the alley where I have to take to reach his place. It's a dark back alley with minimal light and no sight of a man in that alley. No sight of a man in that alley. Definitely looks like that one alley which has thugs lurking inside of it. But do I have other choices? And so I'm gonna risk myself getting more lost. I need to take this alley. That bastard. What if I get mugged or worse, some cosmic portal opened and some monster came out and then eat me up? I was like, no, water time. Scree! Did I just jinx myself? My thought and movement immediately cut off when I heard those unearthly screeching. I should run, but my feet feel frozen in place in the worst possible moment. Bang! Rusty trash can lid slammed right to the ground in front of me. I jumped out of shock and screamed in fear as natural response. Phew! Just a lid. I scared for nothing. Wait. Who's throwing it? The next thing I know, I, a black and long tentacle swings right towards me. The reflex can't say kicks in and I immediately jump to the right before hitting the hard ground. I look up and saw the wall behind me already damaged with a long scratch mark. A huge surge of fear enters my bones and my body is shaking as if there's an earthquake. Black feet slowly revealed from behind the shadow. The other one steps out as well. Each step makes my blood drain from my head. Its whole body is like a black mannequin but a long and pointed tentacle replaced its arm. The black featureless face is looking straight at me with a, bl with a blank but dangerous stare. <laughs> Stay back! Stay back! I can only crawl back and hurl. My eyes can't look away from the creature even if I want to. However, that monster was indifferent about it. 
The black creature slowly raised its slender tentacles upward, but its tip was pointing straight at my chest. Then the tentacle darts at me in full speed. Ah! Oh, I closed my eyes and waited for the moment something could pierce through me, but that moment doesn't come. I can still hear my drained scream, so I'm not dead yet. Slowly, I opened my eyes and saw the black tentacle already severed on the ground. I look, I look forward to find a girl standing between me and the creature. She wears a black turquoise hoodie, so I can't really see her face. But my attention is more focused on the black katana she holds in her hand. Are you okay? I nod quietly. I take the silence as a yes. Move. The creature groaned when it saw another player entering the fight. More black tentacles start to grow from its back and quickly launch its attack at the girl. In return, the girl immediately countered the attack with her sword and managed to dodge some of it. I stare in awe, looking how nimble she is. I don't know what's really going on. Did, did I accidentally, accidentally enter a film shooting or maybe a prank TV show? Need to hide. I find a huge dumpster right beside me and quickly jump behind it. The fight is unexpectedly thrilling to watch. It's like live action hardcore fantasy action movie. But I can't watch too much. One big tentacle slams the dumpster real hard and forces me back into hiding. One minute. Eh? What does she mean by one minute? The girl waved her hand as a faint red light formed around her arm. The red light rapidly condensed into a long string of lights before it launched at the tentacles and circled them. The movement was so fast that the next thing I see, the tentacles already locked in place by numbers of string entangling them in place. The girl calmly stares at the creature when she saw it wail in the she saw it rail rail and wage. One second, y'all. Alright, sorry about that. The girl calmly stares at the creature when she saw it wailed in rage. The struggle was clearly visible from its movement. The red string slowly glowing warm and entrapped the monster in place. Alright, been here long enough. Good night. She slightly smiled and severed the creature's head, sending it flying upward and landed right freaking in front of me. The featureless face stares deep into my soul, the oozing black liquid coming out from the severed neck. It's so horrid, my feet lose their strength and my view becomes hella hazy. Then I fall into the ground. Alright, I'm gonna pause it right here real quick and can drink some water. Okay. I woke up and I have no idea how much time had passed. I look around and take my phone. Fortunately, the screen is black and it won't turn on. Ah, I hope it just I hope just I hope it's just out of batteries. I looked around and I'm alone there. Not a single sign from the fight I watched earlier is on site. Everything is normal, surprisingly normal. For a second there, I thought, I'm hallucinating, but the experience is burned in my brain. However, more important matter to do now, nagging the heck out of my cousin. What? This all happened because of him. I rely on my memory to get to Roderick's place. Fortunately, it's just a short walk outside this damn back alley. I arrived for a short walk, or I thought I arrived because it's not a townhouse, or it's a cafe. The exterior was quite fancy and resembled old Victorian architecture with a huge black framed window and red brick wall. Above the entrance, you could see the wooden sign with the name of the cafe on it. Sweet Spices. Huh. That's the name of the game. I hope that guy isn't joking. Nobody told me that Roderick opened a cafe here. I sighed and look inside if this is really his place while hoping nobody see sees me like a creep. He wasn't joking. There he is, cleaning the island counter and looking not worried at all. Does he even care that I'm late or something? You know what? Uh, well, welcome to... Oh, hey, Chance. I was just about to call you. You were late an hour, so I was a bit worried. A bit? A bit? Dude, you left someone alone in the city to make them walk into a dark alleyway. Sorry about that. I have something urgent, so I need, so I need, to, le so I need to leave you there. Besides, I did give you a map, and those alleys are safe. I walk through there every day. Now I almost died because of a monster. If not because some random cat girl already skewered by tentacles. You sure you're not imagining things? Jeez, but you're tired. Come here, let me make you tea. I'm not imagining things, I know what I saw. Those things can't be real. Come on, what did the monster look like? I'm sure it's from one of the movies you saw. It wasn't, it was like a black mannequin with tentacles in its back. It doesn't have a face and it was tall. Like, uh, Slender Man? But no, it's different, it didn't wear any clothes and... Oh. Oh. Hey, I'm back. You call that nuisance a dangerous spirit? You! Wait, you? Oh great, what timing. 
My cousin slams his face against the counter as the cat girl awkwardly came closer. Did someone care to explain what's going on? The girl tried to not make eye contact with me while Roderick still focused on making the tea. Alright, what's going on here? Are you guys pranking me? Yes? No? This is taking too long. This is taking so this is taking too long. Let him let me flash him. What? Hey, whoa. What? You can't flash him like that, he's my cousin. So, you flashed a hundred people at a wedding party yesterday. But it's strangers, not my direct family. I flashed my brother ten times in a row at his birthday party and only got him a mild headache the next morning. What's your excuses? Uh, not wanting to be rude, but out of context it sounds weird. Indecent, almost. He sighs and pulls out something that looks like a pen. You stay there, it'll be over and up. Immediately, Roger's hand snatches the pen away. Nope, I'll take this out. Do family members get special treatment now? Just give me a minute. This wouldn't happen if you keep your cousin with you. At least act like you don't recognize the person when you see him, you... Stop it! Both of you tell me what's going on! Roger paused a little before he speaks up. Chance, uh, for tonight, for tonight matter, could you pretend that it didn't happen, like, at all? Absolutely not! Absolutely not! Please let me handle this. Why? Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. This is a new Let's Play series on Sweet Spices. And we all thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and that notification bell. Leave a super thanks. Your tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.